Hi, it's Ian from the Postal Hub Podcast. And Marek from Last Mile Experts. And we are the Last Mile Prophets. This is the last word on the last mile. This video is created thanks to Modern Expo, one of the key players in the world's parcel locker market. Modern Expo's product portfolio includes innovative solutions with refrigeration and freezing cells, Bluetooth locks, and even personal parcel lockers. Marek, we're going to talk about parcel lockers. No surprise there, everybody. But, you know, one of the things that we we, we talk about location, we talk about carrier neutral versus carrier specific, we talk about all these things, we don't talk about some of the technical stuff and Marek you were just saying before we hit record that you actually think that this is one of the most important factors in ensuring parcel locker success so what do you mean why do you, what is it that other than location that's going to be such a, a driver of success of a parcel locker network absolutely this is a really cool topic because everybody when they look at lockers they think about the machine you know what does it offer and so on. They forget about a couple of important things. The most typical one is a software, which is probably more important than the hardware. And the next one is they don't think about servicing. And I think this is a really big deal because as locker networks expand and they're no longer just in an individual city, they're nationwide and more and more so they're actually cross-border, then servicing becomes a real issue. You know, let's not forget the fact that any machine, your car, good example as well in my case, if it's not serviced properly, it will stop working. And if it stops working, you get up unhappy customers, you have service failures, etc. So I think th- this is a call to action to everyone to really make sure once their networks start getting bigger, have they thought about it? Have they thought about you know, who can manage that for them so that it's cost effective, efficient and customer centric? Because I reckon, and it's more than reckoning, we did a bit of research here. There are actually not so many companies that can do this on a nationwide and even fewer that can do it on a cross-border basis. If you think about ATMs, your, your bank machines, yeah, if they're out of action, you get ticked off and you start to wonder if you should change bank and things like that if it's regularly down. So the same principle, I suppose, applies here. So you said there are a couple of things you mentioned there. One was about the software and we've discussed this in one of our workshops that we've run previously about setting up a pass locker and a Pudo network, the importance of software. And the other thing you said was about service level agreements. Just starting with a the software then, what's a couple of things that you have to bear in mind when it comes to selecting a software provide, well, I guess, and is it always separate to the hardware provider? Do you, do you just get a box with a locker and then they say, go off and find the software? How does it work? There's two types of software. There's what's, you're going to be impressed with me here. There's something called firmware, which is the software that actually runs the device. Most operators will have that and Hopefully, in most cases, it's going to work fairly well. But of course, if it doesn't work well, you can have the best hardware in the universe. But if the if the firmware doesn't work well, you'll have a problem. It's a bit like if you think about, I'll come back to my car example. If you have a car... I'm, with I'm a... fascinated by what's happened to Maddox's car, everybody. He's going around <laughs> on a bicycle at the moment. Well, I'll tell you what happened to my car. My, my car had an upgrade of software and a few challenges. All the nice, funny, exciting things didn't work. So... <laughs> So that's that's why I think this firmware is so important. You know, you can have a supercar, you know, with a super engine and everything, but more and more so, if the software inside the car doesn't work, then think about it. Your nav's not going to work as it should. Your radio won't work. Your engine may not even work as it should. Generally speaking, firmware is not an issue. Most players have got it right. Although, please, please, if you're buying lockers, check that the software, the firmware within the machine allows it to work well. But that's not the big deal. I think the really big deal is the software that runs a network that will interface with carriers that will interface with e-commerce and if that software sucks then you are in real trouble because that's the software now you know i'm gonna have to say this at some stage idm idm is going to be linked to that idm interactive delivery management otherwise known as uber for parcels the bit where the consignee can see, can follow, can decide what happens with his or her parcel. I think that piece of software is absolutely fundamental. And you, you said, I'm, I'm getting carried away here, I know. We're supposed to talk about servicing, but I, I just got to finish this one. You, you, you know, you said that it is important. It is important, but it's it's not just about whether it works. It's about how customer-centric it can be and very important how easily interfaceable it can be. Because what do you mean by easily interfaceable then? What I mean by that, Ian, is generally these networks are going to be run by a post office Office, more and more so by a large retailer with a lot of retail locations and they're going to have big legacy systems and what right. they don't want to hear 
is that it's going to be nine months to implement this software because it's difficult and complex. This is one of the things in the past that my buddies at Switbox were very successful with. They had software that was super easy to interface and they were winning against sometimes better machines because of the software. That's the software story. We right. can actually now, do a whole video cast on this. I, I reckon that's enough for now. And if people, if people want to find out more, well, they can drop a message below and maybe uh, set up a time for an actual workshop with Matic or with someone to talk about about uh, this and get into some real nitty gritty. The other thing we're talking about though is maintenance, the service level agreement that you've got. And this is where, again, you're talking about the ATM or the cash machine that goes down. You know, you can't have that cash machine out of action. You can't have a parcel locker out of action, especially if it's got people's parcels in it. So, Matic, what are the kind of things that carrier, a locker network app operator, or a retailer who's going to have lockers needs to be thinking about when it comes to the service level agreements or the maintenance agreement, whatever you want to call it? I think, first of all, Ian, they need to do their homework because we actually recently got, t- got contacted by a very big operator with a lot of experience in the out-of-home space. And it turned out that there was a big tender and there was an issue with finding a service partner. You've got to do your homework well in advance. And, and what we found because we started doing some research here, we realized there are actually not that many companies that have high quality and nationwide competence, let alone cross-border competence. The second is becoming more and more, more important as locker networks expand from just nationwide. You know, it used to be city-wide. Now it's nationwide. The next step is going to be probably Europe-wide or continent-wide. So I think it's it's a big issue to, to do your homework. But in terms of coming back to your question, I'm really doing a bit of a tangent today. But coming back to your question, I think the most important thing is make sure that you have the elements in your SLA that will give a good customer experience. Perfect example, you cannot have a 24 24- four-hour response rate for a major service failure, i.e. the machine is not working and nothing happens for 24 hours. There has to be a very short response rate. It should be exceptionally short if it's a software issue, which can be done online. And then probably we're talking ideally about minutes if you know hours become a bit, a bit of an issue. If it requires a physical response, a visit to the machine, because it's, it's not just a software issue, it's a hardware, bleak software issue, in which case it can be hours, but maybe only a couple of hours maximum, because the worst, as you identified before, the worst possible thing is you have out of order on your machine and you desperately need your anniversary present, which you forgot about, and it's there, super fast delivery, and stuck in the locker. We always talk about anniversary presents. I'll, I wonder what goes on at your place, Matic, when, when the anniversary <laughs> rolls around. <laughs> but in all seriousness, this is an, I don't want to say an unseen part of it. If you look at the postal world, there's been technology behind the post office counter for years and years and years. And you need to have that technology up and running. There's the hardware, there's the software, there's also the data link. Now, Matic, we've, so we've talked about the software, we've talked about the hardware a little bit. You know, doors can get jammed and things like that. But what about the data link part of it? Or even it, it, you know, getting power to the site for those lockers that need power to the site. Do you need to bear that in, consider, in consideration as well? Absolutely. You know, servicing is a function also of putting the lockers in place and, and checking all these things and making sure that it's stable and well connected and, and so on. I have to say with next gen lockers like uh, Switbox's Infinity Locker, you don't actually need a lot of that because I call it a parasitic locker because it, it doesn't need power. The battery lasts, they claim for nine years. From my perspective, even if it's five years, that's great. But it, it uses your cell phone. So that, that's why I call it a parasitic machine, because it, it, it doesn't need Wi-Fi or anything. It links with your mobile and uses the data capability of that device to do what it needs to do. So it's pretty cool. But I mean, I think, Ian, this is such a big topic. As you know, because you helped us by editing it, there's going to be an article on parcel and postal technology written by Mirek Graal on exactly this topic, because we think it's a big deal. It's something we don't generally talk about we don't really get into too much of the techie stuff so it's quite cool occasionally no. all you tech guys out there you can finally have something that's really technical meaty and not just namby bambi so I, I think you know if people are interested we can give a link to the article later when it's when it's online but the topic is big and i reckon let's see what people say Ian. but if people come back to us and say yeah they want more we could really dive deep into the servicing issue we could dive deep into the software issue we could dive into the location issue because i think that's another one lack of locations uh, we've talked about location quite a bit haven't we um but if you want us to run a workshop for your organization whether you're a carrier an e-commerce player or whatever you want to know more about this drop us a line somehow a comment below or send me an email whatever it is and we'll 
have a chat about doing a custom-made workshop for your organization. I'll put a link down below also to that article on Parcel and Postal Technology International.com so that you can have a read of the article, which gives a little bit more detail, expands on some of the topics that Maddox mentioned today. Thanks for watching this video on YouTube. Remember to hit like, subscribe, and the thing here, the bell. The bell means that you get a notification. Did you know that, Maddox? You get a notification, I think, on your phone if you've got all linked up to your phone or wherever every time we post a new video. Subscribing to these videos, I'll get it out in a second, everybody. Subscribing to these videos helps us keep this channel free so that we can keep on giving this sort of great information on parcel lockers and out-of-home delivery and the future of delivery in general, which is so hugely important. But I won't rabbit on about that right now. Marta Krzyzewski, thanks for being part of The Last Mile Profits today. Thank you, Ian. Thank you, everybody.